This is Fountain Pendulum. Let's talk about 10 pens, a 10 pen fountain pen collection. Now, if you've seen Goulet Pen's hot take video, Drew Brown talks about a 10 pen collection. If you haven't seen that video yet, the link is in the description below and I would highly suggest you watch that video before you watch this video. Otherwise, it may not make any sense to you and um, it might be a little challenging to kind of grasp what's going on here. But basically, Drew Brown presents um, a recommendation for how to have a 10 pen collection and how to select each one of these pens. And I took it very lightly. I think there's a lot of humor in it, especially when we get to pen number 10. So I went ahead and did my 10 pen collection based off of Drew's recommendations. And I'm gonna show you each pen. I actually inked them all up just so that I can show you how they perform. Now, at the end of the video, I'm gonna be sharing with you what my 10 pen collection would look like if I didn't abide by Drew's um, kind of recommendations for this formula of 10 pens. And I guess the big secret in the end is I'm not going to narrow down my collection to 10 pens. It's just kind of an interesting uh, procedure or exercise to do because I'm constantly thinking about curating my fountain pen collection and I actually have to do a collection update because I've let go of four pens and gotten five new ones. So, you know, don't, if you're clasping on to your fountain pens right now, no one's taking them away from you. You can keep them. This is just for fun. So let's, let's jump into it. So number one uh, is a stub nib. And actually I would prefer italics, which are very similar to stubs, but they're a crisper, sharper version. So for this, I'm going to be going with my Pelican 400. This is a vintage make and it's actually the brown tortoise with celluloid striped. This is a 14 karat gold old style nib also. So it's got a lot of spring and bounce to it. And it has a custom grind on it, which is a italic. So let me write this out for you. So originally this was a medium. And it now has a really lovely juicy italic. So that is my pick for number one. By the way, this is Diamine. Tobacco Sunburst for the ink. All right, number two, a pocket pen. And for this, I am selecting my Visconti Viscontina. It's a, a lovely, very compact uh, pocket-sized pen. This is Red Arco Celluloid and it has a medium 14 karat gold nib that I've actually had custom ground into an architect. So let's take a look at this one.
And in here we have Kobe number 27, Kunin Maroon. Number three is an expendable pen. So this is the pen that I often will carry around in my purse. I would have no fear to let anyone use it if they wanted to. It's just a cross pen. I have no idea what the model is. Um, gold trim, kind of white pearlescent. But I got this on clearance for $10, and if I lost it, or if it broke, or if someone smashed the nib in, I would not be heartbroken. So, I'll just put cross, fountain, pen. Um, this was a medium. I did my own uh, kind of architect-ish grind to this. And I have Pilot. I dipped this, it's quite wet, more than usual, I'd say. This is Isagel. Number three. Number four is a premium pen. And for this, I would be selecting my Stipula Etruria. It's, for me, a premium pen is kind of a luxury pen. It's more than necessary. So this is made of celluloid. It has a band and clip of silver. And um, originally this came with an 18 karat gold nib. I now have a titanium nib on it instead. So we'll do a writing sample with this too. And this is the titanium. And I've had, this was like a medium fine originally. I've had it ground down to an extra fine. This is also a little bit of a springy nib. And this has the alchemy ink drops of Mars. Number five is a higher ink capacity pen. And I went with a piston filler. So I like to switch inks out frequently. So to me, it doesn't really have to be like a vac filler or eyedropper filler high capacity. This for me is sufficient. So that's what I went with. So this is a... Pelican M400 White Tortoise, 14 karat, extra fine, and I have Sailor Moroccan Mint. All right, number six is a flexible nib. And for this, I've selected my Aurora Optima with a flex nib. And it's definitely not the most flexible nib on the market. 
um, of different offerings, I would say, but it is a very nice obliging flex nib and the writing experience is very, very pleasant. So for that reason, that is my choice for number six. This is a fine nib. And probably more flex can be accomplished, but I've got my nib tuned and we're still kind of getting acquainted. So that's the degree of flex I am going to go for for now. And then ink. J. Carbon. Rouge. Grenade. Okay. Then a travel pen is number seven. So for this, I've selected my Keras Pen Co. This is a Vertex. It's made of white Delrin, which is a very um, kind of sturdy material. It's used um, industrially, so it's very robust. And then it also has a olive metal section and a Keras um, stamped titanium Bach nib. So this is for travel. It would just, I wouldn't be worried about it. Titanium, and this is extra fine. It's my finest writer, so I really enjoy that. And I have this inked with Kobe number 49. Kitana. Olive. Number eight is a broad nib. I don't properly have any broad nibs in my collection, but I have a custom grind that would work as a broad nib. So this is my Mont Blanc 221. It's a vintage pen, and it's a really nice green resin. Ink window, 14 karat gold, vintage nib, and I've had this ground. It was a fine. It now has a Gucci grind on it, so it's going to be a lot broader um, of a line, which that's what we're looking for, so... And I have this inked up with Robert Oster 
crocodile green. Now that I write that, that's finer than I remember it being. What do you think? Does this still qualify as broad or do I get disqualified from this 10 pen question um, lineup because that was not broad enough? Number nine is an extra fine nib. And for this, um, I picked a Pelican M400 old style and it has a blue marble. It's a vintage nib in extra fine. And the reason I picked this for extra fine is not because it's like my finest of extra fines or anything like that, but rather the uniqueness of this grind. There we go. This is the factory grind. See how it's kind of like an architect? So it's really for the uniqueness of this extra fine that I have selected it. can see a little bit of line variation just a little bit there a bit of bounce on this nib as well and I have this inked up with violet Okay, the last as number 10 from Drew's list is a Twisby swipe. So I've had a Twisby swipe, wasn't a big fan of it. I rehomed it, but I will honor the Twisby name in number 10 with this. Twisby Classic in turquoise with a extra fine nib. And I have to say, these are Yovo nibs is my understanding. And this is an extremely pleasant writer, this nib. Excellent extra fine and fantastic feedback on the nib. These classics and the precision are not very common or popular or well known from the Twisby offerings, but they are excellent pens. I have this inked with the same pilot. Roshizuku. So that is the 10 pens based off Drew Brown's kind of formula for a 10 pen collection, which I think is a nice guideline for someone who wants a 10 pen collection and needs some way to break down their collection. However, if I was breaking down my collection to 10, which I'm not going to do. But if I was, if I felt so inclined, I'd make some modifications. This would definitely not be a keeper because I would probably use this as a expendable pen instead. Um, because I'm not really worried about giving Twisby an honorable mention or whatever at number 10. Um, so three, six, nine. But I have two more pens here that I would have a hard time not keeping in my top 10. So let's take a look at these. 
we have, they're both actually flex pins. So this one is a Pilot Falcon, resin body in black, 14 karat flex nib, originally a fine, and it's been customized with added flex and an italic nib, the Pilot Falcon. So it was a soft fine, now added flex and an italic. Um, ink, this is the alchemy ink. So drops of Mars. Now I'm not incredibly fond of this pen as a whole but I am the nib, especially because it's been custom ground. I think that if it was just the standard soft fine nib that it came with from Pilot, I would have no problem bumping this right off my top 10 because the soft fine nib from Pilot is interesting, but it's not a keeper for the top 10 for me. So it's purely the modification to me that has added uniqueness and value to which I wouldn't really be inclined to getting rid of the pen. Next I have um, a Peniter Avatar Deluxe. This is in Neptune Blue gold trim, 14 karat quill nib, um, which has a very lovely writing experience, um, either for flexing or for standard. And I stand by that this is indeed a flex nib. Very wet, juicy rider. Then we've got the 14 carat quill nib. Extremely responsive. I'd say this is the most obliging in feeling but perhaps not the most flex necessarily. Um, it's actually pretty on par with the Aurora, although I wasn't like pushing the Aurora to the max. This one I've had for a long time, I'm pushing it pretty far. It's got a wet ink in it, but the standard line, even though this is an extra fine, is really not that fine, right? So, that's that's kind of the thing here. And this is Ferris Wheel Press Bluegrass Velvet. So there we go. Now we come to the question is, you know, what's happening with the collection, this 10 pen situation with these involved? <clears throat> I think what I'd have to do is take this out and, oh, this was going. I mean, this, yeah, it would have to go. Okay, so this is what I would do. 
The reason being, I'm not super attached to this pen as a very nice writer. I like it. I like being able to take it around with me. I'd let anyone use it, or mostly anyone use it, uh, and I wouldn't be fearful. So I like it for those reasons. I like it for just quick uses. It's a pleasant writing experience. If a pen is not pleasant to write with, I don't keep it because I don't derive joy from using it and therefore it doesn't have a purpose. So um, I do keep it for that reason. And for this one, I love the appearance of the pen. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. My issue lies with the nib. It hasn't been an impressive writing experience for me, however beautiful this nib is, and therefore it's easy to let go of. It would be really nice to get a custom grind on this that was superb, and then it would probably be a keeper and bump somebody else, but today that's not the case and therefore it would get the bump. And three, six, nine, oh! Oh, that's right, because I got rid of this one too. Okay, well, I guess it gets to stay then. There you go. Ten. Done. That wasn't so hard. Um, now, like I said before, in reality, this isn't happening. I'm not going to narrow my, uh, at least at this point in my journey, I'm not going to be narrowing my pen collection down to ten. Although I think that's perfectly reasonable, and I think I would be very satisfied with these ten pens, and there's plenty of variation, and they're customized to what I like, and I think I'd be fine. But I like variation, and I like change, and I like curating. And so there are some pens that I think, oh, I'd never get rid of this pen. I love this pen. But as you continue in your journey, and as, at least speaking for myself, as my skills and my taste adapt and change um, or evolve, then my opinion changes. Um, I'm already feeling that happen. Um, some pens that I absolutely adored that I think were perfect and then another one comes in and surpasses it because it's just that much more comfortable or the nib is just that much more responsive, whatever it may be. Um, there's uniqueness to these pens and I think it's great that you can continue the journey. So even though I have um, I'm in 20 plus pens right now. I'm, I'm happy with what I have. I'm continuing to curate it. I don't really feel like this urge to have 10 pens exactly, but if I did today, these would be the 10. How about you? How do you feel about a 10 pen collection? And would you do that? Even for fun, would you make a list of your top 10 favorites today if you were, you know, to narrow it down? If you want to share, leave it in the comments below. If not, enjoy the multitude of your pens and enjoy them. It's all up to you now. I'll see you on the next one.